Welcome back, everybody, to the Arkansas Soybean Promotion Board's Soybean Podcast. Today, I am talking with Ben Thrash, Assistant Professor and Row Crop Extension Entomologist, and his project is titled Soybean Insect Management. And so that's what's really neat about the virus is you're reducing, uh, you know, the amount of active ingredient going out on acres, which is a good look just in general for farmers. Right. But yeah, if you can keep, you know, bollworms out of the field for a month, that's, you know, great. Right. And especially at the low cost that a lot of these viruses are, is a, is a, a really huge benefit to growers. Yeah, as opposed to chemical. Yeah, chemical as opposed case. to some of the alternatives. Right. This project, we focused on uh, working with some of the viruses uh, for insect control. Everybody kind of knows about Heligen. It's got widespread use on you know hundreds of thousands of acres in Arkansas for control of corn earworm and soybean. And it's been a really successful uh, virus biological control agent for controlling corn earworm and soybeans. But now we're transitioning to try to work on uh, soybean looper virus as well as uh, fall armyworm virus. And uh, we spend a lot of time working on the soybean looper virus currently. And everybody knows how bad the fall armyworms were this year. We've been working on a fall armyworm virus alongside with Ag Biotech. We, in matter of fact, we found a naturally occurring uh, population of virus in, uh, in South Arkansas. And so we actually sent some to Ag Biotech for them to isolate that virus, hoping that it might be one that'll be successful and uh, you know actually have good activity on fall armyworms. So does it work? They isolate it down south Arkansas. Can you replicate it elsewhere for widespread use? I mean, as a yes. naturally occurring virus, that's going to be yeah. right. And what's really cool, so it can be put on any organic soybeans or any organic crop, and it also works really good because what we see with these viruses is that they replicate you know, out throughout the field, throughout the growing season. So it's got residual effect. Yeah, it's got somewhat residual effect. I mean, it's not true residual, but what it's doing is it making those worms sick out there. That virus replicates in those worms, and then it just keeps infecting other worms out there in the field. And we've seen the virus out there in the field as long as 40 days. So as true viruses do, they're gonna yeah. try to survive however they can, right. which is a win for for you guys. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. It's interesting. So what else are you guys using this year? You know, we've also got our cover crop project and we've been looking at, uh, we've been looking at some different insecticide seed treatments uh, within uh, some different cover crops. Mm -hmm. And what we found uh, with it is, is that we were seeing a consistent about two bushel yield increase uh, across the board, no matter what seed treatment we put on the soybeans. Wow. Yeah. So the somewhat controversial cover crop conversation is being proven out? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, our research shows that it doesn't matter if you're running fallow, it doesn't matter if you're in a cover crop. Insecticide to seed treatment gives you a yield advantage over a untreated uh, or a non-insecticide seed treated soybean uh, pretty consistently. So we, we've naturally lost the kudzu bug threat yeah. problem. Yeah, uh, yeah, we did have kudzu bug and then the fungus Bavaria bassiana. You know, it seemed to really like, it really took hold of those uh, kudzu bugs. Now, you know how common they were mm -hmm. several years ago. Well, now it's like, I, if I find one in a sweet net, it's like, hey, look, there's a kudzu bug. You know, I hadn't seen one of those yet this year. Yeah. We got another project that's actually helping fund a graduate student uh, Taylor Harris, and she's uh, looking at the impacts of water quality on some of our insecticides and how that affects their efficacy. And we've got some preliminary research going on in the lab uh, kind of right now. And what we've seen uh, is that when, as water hardness increases, it's actually reducing the efficacy of some of our, uh, some of our insecticides. Now, I don't think that's gonna translate exactly to the field but I think you might see some reduction in your residual control with these insecticides if you're putting it, if you're mixing with a, a really hard water source. So, so uh, growers are able to get that, have that tested, stay on top of that. 
yes. eventually. Yeah, they, they'll be able to get their water tested and we will have recommendations in the future on how to treat uh, these different situations. Slugs are becoming, you know, more and more of an issue every year. Uh, it seems like we're getting more and more phone calls about slugs and soybeans and other crops as well. Uh, and they're particularly a problem behind cover crops and in minimum till situations. They have the habitat, right? Yeah, they have the habitat. Right. They've got a lot of residue for them to hide under. Mm -hmm. They like those moist conditions where they won't dry out and stuff. And so actually Dr. Bateman, he got a good trial out this year on looking at uh, deadline MP and looking at some different rates of that because that uh, slug bait is uh, it's very expensive and so you know if you're asking a grower to put out an application of something that's thirty dollars an acre that's a that's a significant amount of money mm -hmm. and so we've been looking at some reduced rates as well as uh, banding uh, banded applications so we can actually cut those costs down for growers. And we're seeing actually a little bit of success with, uh, with some of those banded applications, uh, but the reduced rates of the deadline don't seem to be uh, doing too well. But that's some research that we're hoping to uh, right. kind of focus on in the future. On uh, those early seedling soybeans, I mean, they can really cause some uh, stand loss. Right. Quite, they can eat quite a bit of soybeans. And so when they're typically a problem is Earlier in the year, uh, as you know, these past few years, we've had some really wet springs and it's been really conducive for, right. uh, for slugs. And so they've really uh, done a number on you know, quite a few fields. And so we're trying to look at some, uh, some methods for controlling these slugs that are uh, profitable for our growers. Right. You know? But you know, if it wasn't for the Arkansas Soybean Promotion Board, we wouldn't be able to conduct a lot of this research uh, that I really feel has value to our growers of the state of Arkansas. Yeah, you're right. And uh, thanks for the update. I'm looking forward to see um, how all this progresses. Thanks for your time today, and uh, we'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Arkansas Soybean Promotion Board's Soybean Podcast. We hope you'll follow us on Twitter at Arkansas Soybean and even more resources at themiraclebean.com. Mm -hmm.